Several hours had passed since they had heard about the estimated number of people lost. Han sat on a small couch, with Brittany still clinging to his side as if she was charging up her internal batteries. Lifting a teacup to his lips, Han tasted the soothing herbal mixture with a slight sweetness in it. He glanced over to the queen and saw her also drinking her tea. Compared to earlier, the queen had regained her composure. Ellie was still near her, holding her hand and trying to comfort her mother. By the way they reacted to the news, Han knew that they were caring rulers who thought about their people first. With our forces practically gone, we are now exposed to the Empire. The Queen said out loud to no one in particular. Ellie gritted her teeth, hearing her mother's words. How can they be such monsters, willing to invade a nation who is still recovering from such invaders? Have your two countries been in conflict with one another? Han inquired, not knowing about the geopolitical situation in this world. Ellie's mother nodded her head at Han's question. Even before the Empire's aggressive acts towards their neighbors, the Empire has always had their eye set on our kingdom. They are of the opinion that non-humans are perfect to use as slaves. Also, they covet our natural resources. I do not know why they need such resources since they have plenty of their own, but after several major battles and us pushing them back, they have been content with watching us," she explained to him. I have been noticing an increase in anti-non-human mentality inside of the academy. Do you think this is due to the Empire? Han asked. That is very likely. Even though the academy is within the Helios Kingdom, the Empire has done well with using their influence to change the minds of many who attend the academy. The largest church is one that is headquartered in the Empire, and they preach that non-humans should be enslaved instead of being allowed to walk freely. They believe that humans are the superior species and is their right to subjugate all others. The Queen's expression was a mixture of anger and weariness. Thinking about how many of her people would likely be enslaved by the Empire's forces and she couldn't stop them. Even after seeing what he was capable of, Han knows that they didn't try to ask for his help. Considering what he has seen of them, this was likely due to not wanting him to get involved, instead of due to pride. Taking a sip of his tea, Han looked towards the Queen and Ellie and offered a small gift. With all that he had been through, I would like to offer my assistance in rebuilding your kingdom and defending your borders. If you would allow me to, that is. The two of them turned towards him, bewildered by what he was offering. Han, I appreciate that you would be willing to assist my people. I am unsure how a single city would be able to do all the work necessary. I do not mean to belittle your kind offer, but... She trailed off, unsure how to gracefully accept and decline his offer. I agree with my daughter. To hear that you are willing to help us is greatly appreciated but I am unsure what you will be able to do. The queen did a better job at politely voicing her thoughts and concerns to Han. This was likely due to her years of diplomatic experience as a ruler. It seems as though you are underestimating our master's abilities, Anaclis hissed, annoyed at how they responded to his kind offer. Now now, Anaclis, there is no need to be rude. It is understandable that they will have doubts, he chastised her. Looking to the queen and Ellie, Han suggested, How about I bring some people over, and if you are unsatisfied, then I will be on my way? They looked at him, trying to understand whether he was serious, especially with how casual he was being in regards to helping them out. Ellie's mother just dumbly nodded her head. I am glad that you have accepted my offer. Han smiled at the two of them, excited about seeing the expression when he shows them what he is capable of. Your Highness! A voice could be heard off in the distance, sounding shocked by something. 
Alexonia was staring at the mountains of paperwork in front of her. The army that invaded, she was later informed that they were demons by E, had done so much damage, so each of the representatives of the cities, towns, and villages had submitted reports and requests for aid. Reaching to massage her temples, she tried to keep a throbbing headache to a bearable level. Though many people would think that being a queen would be fun and games, going to parties and talking to wealthy people, Ellie's parents got rid of such notions at an early age. Her father and mother wanted her to know that being a ruler was extremely challenging and stressful when done right. The door to her private study crashed open, revealing the individual who was calling out for her. Dressed in a very professional looking outfit, the woman who came barging open was one of Ellie's closest advisors on the day-to-day -day events. Ellis gently laid down the ink pen she was using and looked up at Crystal. Seeing the look on Crystal's face, Ellis could feel the throbbing in her head increase. Putting on a calm and patient face, she asked, Crystal, do you not think it is prudent to knock before you crash into my personal study? I am very sorry, your highness. Crystal blushed at her unbecoming behavior. There is something that you need to see. I know that you would want to know about it as soon as possible. She tried to maintain a certain level of dignity, but her frazzled look was making that difficult. Sighing, Ellis got up and walked around her desk. I needed a break from all that paperwork anyway, so let us go see what has gotten you all flustered. Walking out of the study, she looked towards the guards and said, I will be accompanying Crystal. Nodding at their salute, she followed Crystal, who was walking very rapidly towards her destination. Not seeing a need to go at the same pace, Ellis casually walked with her guards following her. As they walked through the palace, she saw her daughter turn around the corner. Ellie, what are you doing here? Ellis asked her daughter. There was some kind of commotion happening outside the city, so I wanted to go investigate the matter. Ellie explained to her. Interesting. I was wondering why Crystal was acting like a madwoman, suddenly entering my study without permission. Ellis responded to her daughter's information. Ellie looked shocked by news of Crystal's behavior. That is very unusual of Crystal to ignore formalities and protocols. Well, at least it gave me an excuse to leave that mountain of paperwork for a moment. Daughter, I hope you are prepared for the amount of work that being a ruler brings. Ellis sighed, feeling exhausted by all the work still left to do.